Remember, you asked for this. This is the Warther's 7 inch chef knife. And this guy right here is what they call Old Faithful. You guys have asked me before, hey, is there a U.S. made chef knife that you would recommend? And through my research and excluding, you know, one-off customs and custom knife makers and all that, I have decided to go with Warther. The reason I went with Warther is because some of the quote-unquote American made knives are not completely 100% made in America. Whereas Warther's, all the way down to the steel itself, is American made. A quick disclaimer, Warther did send me both of these knives. They're very much aware that I do 100% honest reviews. When I told them I do a first impression video and then also I do a six months follow up, they were really happy to hear it because they thought it was a very thorough review process instead of just opening and boxing because like we've talked about before, every knife can be sharp straight out of the box. So let's get started. Let's take both of these knives out of their boxes. So here is their packaging as you can see. I hear some rattling in there. And there is a letter. So I talked to Steven. Steven, thank you so much for working with us. Let's go ahead and see. It says, Raph, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Please find a seven inch French chef knife and the three inch Old Faithful paring knife enclosed. Beyond our passion of knife making, I hope you see the quality and superior performance that has allowed us to continue for 118 years. That is awesome. Sincerely, Steven. Steven, I really, really appreciate you working with us. Thank you again. Now, here is how the packaging came. It came with the knife shoved into a styrofoam block. Now, for this price point, and maybe because so many of us nowadays are spoiled with really nice packaging and lavishly packaged knives when it comes from Kickstarter or wherever your knife comes from, that we're spoiled with really nice packaging nowadays. Now, no damage that I can tell is done to the knife, but I think sometimes when people pay for a knife, they expect nice packaging, but it also goes back to the argument that a lot of people have, are you paying for the knife or are you paying for the packaging, right? So as long as the knife is not damaged, I think we can't really complain too much about I mean, the packaging is really not bad. I think it's just the inside of it. I think maybe just like another, maybe just like another styrofoam block. But of course, we, we want to be a little bit more environmentally friendly as well. So we don't want to use too much styrofoam to just kind of keep it from moving around maybe as much. But as far as I can tell, no damage is done to the neck. So this is the seven inch French chef knife. There are other things in here it's more than a knife there's a lifetime guarantee slip right here and then also a warther's family free lifetime sharpening service so you guys can you guys get one of these knives keep those with you okay so there's the seven inch chef knife and here is old faithful this is the three inch pairing knife You guys can see now first impression that I have on both of these knives just picking them up these knives are really really solid what I mean by really solid, it's you can feel the quality of the knife when you pick it up it is very very well built and it is super just sturdy so there's a ton of history and stories surrounding the Warders brand if you guys haven't already heard of them before. And if you have not, I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of story time. Go check it out on the website and I'll link it all down below. Now when I was talking to Steven on the phone, Steven is the CEO of Warders. I asked him and we were talking about the lifetime sharpening policy. And I asked him, hey Steven, what is the oldest knife that has come in for sharpening? And he said just recently that one of their knives that was made back in the 1920s came in for a sharpening. How freaking cool is that? First thing we need to do is take a look at the fit and finish 
Now, my first impression of this knife, like I said, it is super solid. Handles are on really tight. The knife is very, very straight. I gotta tell you, when you pick up a well-built knife, you can feel it. And you can feel that this knife is built like a tank. Now, one of the cool things about the Warther's knife is that a lot of it is actually hand finished and hand built. By looking at this finish right here, this machining on the blade, I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see that? The machining on the blade is all done by hand, okay? And then the edge itself is ground to a convex grind. If you guys don't know what a convex grind is, most knives come from factory with a full flat grind, okay? The edge of the profile is a full flat grind. And a full flat grind can be done with machines. Whereas a convex grind, which this is a full flat grind, okay? It's flat on both sides. A convex grind is a little rounded. And that is not something that can be done with a machine. Every single one of these knives edge is grind and polished by hand. So that is a really, really impressive thing to see on their website. Most of the knives nowadays that you see are stamped out. You know, like stamped out, forged out, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But it's all pumped out by machines. Another thing that I've noticed while holding on and kind of getting a feel for this knife is that the choils and the spines are not rounded. They're not crowned or anything like that. So they are a little, little hard on the hands, but it's not terrible uh, and can be easily remedied. If you guys haven't seen my video before, check it out. It is the how to turn your mise into a $200 how to turn your misen into a $200 chef knife video where I teach you how to crown your spine and how to round off your choil. Now the next knife we have is this three inch chef knife that they call the Old Faithful. The reason they call this the Old Faithful is because this is one of the very first knives that were actually made. This knife has been around or has been made since 1902. And what's really cool is that it has this little thumb profile right here to keep it from slipping. And it also kind of allows you to have something to push against, which is a really, really nice design, a very utilitarian design. And then, of course, both of these knives are full tan construction with two big rivets through it. And the handle, according to their website, is made with layers of birch. So it's really, really nice. Let's go ahead and test the balance of the knife. It is not at the pinch grip area right around looks like right there right at the tip of the handle I know there are a ton of other American made companies out there Cutco, Lamson and all that other stuff that has you know lifetime sharpening lifetime guarantee and all this stuff but I ruled out some of the other companies because well like I said their steel is not even made in the US so if you guys are looking for a completely US made knife, Warders is the brand that you want to go with. The steel that they use is what drew me to their brand. I nerd out about this stuff, okay? So when I saw that they are using Crucible Industry CPM S35VN steel, my mind just kind of like, whoa, no way. Like someone is using S35VN steel for a chef knife. I mean, if you guys have looked at high end pocket knives and things like that, you will know S30 or S35 V steel is the shit. It is made by Crucible Industry, which is an American steel company. It is a powdered steel and it is also considered a quote unquote super steel. I hate using the term super steel because it's just such a generalized term because VG10 is considered a, a super steel. And what people mean by super steel is that it is a steel that is considered to be very high quality with a great edge retention for that particular niche okay or for that particular knife's purpose s35 vn is a very proven steel because it has great edge retention it holds a, an extremely sharp edge it is very easy to sharpen and that's really what drew me to Warthers. It really rounds out the whole US made thing because like I said, S35VN is made by Crucible Industries. So 
Crucible Industry Steel, made in Dover, Ohio. So there you go, guys. This is a U.S. made knife. Now let's go ahead and grab some stuff and let's get to cutting. All right, so the first test we're going to do, of course, is the magazine paper test. And as you can see, that's user error. <laughs> Both of the knives are super sharp with the paring knife. I mean, this paring knife is super sharp. I'm going to have to try to inspect this edge in a second. Because something is getting caught. On this edge. Like it feels very sharp. But something is getting caught on there. Is just right here closer towards the end now let's go ahead and try to grape test let's see if we can get this this is the grape test for sure So the chef knife passes the grape test. And the paring knife also passes the grape test. So that's good. Same here, we're going to do a tomato test. Okay, tomato cut through, no issues whatsoever. It's almost cutting through. Here we go. I'll get a different angle just so you guys can see how thin the slice is. Look how thin that slice is. It's like paper thin. In case you guys think that there's something holding on to it, there you go. Nothing holding on to it. So it does pass tomato test for a chef knife. I don't even know if the paring knife is big enough for it, but it's just really hard to cut an entire tomato with the paring knife. But we'll do what we can. Alright, we did it. So as you guys can see, both of these knives are sharp. I think there's just, I don't know if you guys can see this right here, but uh, there's just one small spot right here that looks like the edge is not ground all the way consistently, which happens with hand ground knives that uh, I'll get a different angle so you guys can see this too, that there's just this one spot that just got overground a little bit. So as you guys can see, both of the knives pass the tomato and the grape test with no issue whatsoever. For some reason, the paring knife just didn't fare so well on the magazine cut test, the magazine paper cut test. But like I said, part of it is probably because right here you can see the edge where the bevel is. It's just overground, just a hair. Anyhow, this is your all-American made chef knife that we will see if we'll recommend here in six months. But as for right now, from first impression, super solid knife, very sharp, very well made. And these are the Warders Chef Knife and Pear Knife. Hope you guys like it. Check them out down below. And if you guys like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Help me support all this madness. 
and I will see you guys next week. Bye.